It's 10.30 in the morning and we're at a brewery. As Jordan's doing, so his fault. It can only mean one thing. This is dumb money. Right now we're sitting at my friend's brewery, the Manhattan Project Beer Company, and we're gonna learn more about his business. Today's episode is all about non-venture scalable businesses. They're normally overlooked by larger investors and they provide great opportunities for cash flow and in some cases, lower risk points. Also, these types of investments usually come with lower investment minimums, so we don't have to allocate a lot of capital. It's something that we usually do for fun on the side, and it's interesting. How did you get started? We first went to investors. Initially, our plan was go buy or lease property, buy or lease equipment. That turns out to be a multi-million dollar deal. We said, okay, this is how other breweries have done it in the past. There's gotta be a different way, right? Like, look, you should be able to source this stuff out. And we just started calling every brewer we knew. And then we started doing some cold calls. And finally, one of those cold calls kind of worked out. Uh, Jeremy just called up uh, Matt Einger over at Bitter Sisters and said, hey man, we're looking to do an alternating proprietorship or contract arrangement, would you be open to that? And he said, yeah. That's when we found kind of an intermediate step to owning our own facility. But originally, like on our business plan, I think we were looking for about two and a half million to do the whole shebang. And that was to build a facility before you pivoted and said we should just use another facility? Yes. We make all of our own beer. We don't pay someone to make it for us. We pay for the use of the facility. So we were turning beer out on that like once a week, doing new recipes, seeing what the market, how the market responded. And if the market responded really well, we would scale it up and we would do a large batch of it. I love it. Cheers. <laughs> I think we have too many meetings left to go today. <laughs> Leaving our morning beer run now, uh, heading to our next meeting, which is with a software company called Counterfind, uh, and they are all about finding counterfeit merchandise online and helping big brands shut them down. Look who's here. Brian, Brian set this meeting up with Counterfine, and me and Brian met with Counterfine a year ago with their co-founder, who happens to be Darren Woodson, uh, Dallas Cowboys legend, pro bowler, right? Yeah, like, Super Bowl champ. Three Super Bowl, champ. three times, yeah. oh, I forgot about right. that. Three times Super Bowl champ. How has the business model changed, if at all? So the things that have changed is just growth out of just sports. Um, we're now in entertainment and music brands. Think of it in two buckets. One, social media. So we have Facebook and Instagram. We try and find all the posts, ads, anything uh, marketing infringing content from those mediums. Uh, we try and take them down at the ad level. Then you have the marketplaces. You have the Amazons of the world, the Etsy's. We're trying to find all the infringing merch that is being sold on Amazon or Etsy or eBay. So our client uses our software to help find that and report it directly from our system. So they don't even need to touch the marketplace. They can do it all from our system. Because that's the goal, get it out of the marketplace. Financially, what does the company look like right now? Are you cash flow break even yet? We just missed our first positive cash flow month. We were like negative a thousand. <laughs> you might have a real Really great business that can be profitable and make sense as a small profitable business for yourself and your investors. Where are we? UTD, University of Texas, Dallas. That sounds weird, but <laughs> when, when you first told me about this, uh, I was driving, received your text, watched their video, and no. you thinking that the world's best cutting board might be an investment. Well, I don't know. I think it fits in perfectly with this episode. They're not a venture style company, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not a good investment. I mean, it could be a small investment that makes sense. I'm interested to see what the opportunity in the cutting board world is. Our first UTD startup company that we're meeting with. And instead of being a technology company, they make a block of wood that you chop things up. By the way, we are not sticking with dumb money routine. We haven't eaten today and it's already mid-afternoon. You know where the Blackstone Lab is? 2830 Rutherford. Okay, thanks. Well, let me see which way I'm facing. Wait. Because it's that building. We're... We are dumb money. Just as bad with <laughs> navigation as always. Sorry, we've been walking around, couldn't find it. Oh, he says he's walking. Turn the camera around, he's walking to us. Oh, where? Oh, you're in the, oh, you're in, oh! <laughs> All right, great. Yes. This is breaking new ground for us at Dumb Money. We've never done anything like, we never met with anyone with like a consumer product like this. Consumer product. 
it's but we always say what do you say dave we are experts yeah. at nothing dabble in everything right yeah so I, I think a lot of times um you know early stage investors get caught up in you know venture scalable companies it's right. venture scalable or it's not we don't have to think like that right we can do whatever we want and i think we have a lot of needs when it comes to investing as long as it makes sense and why do you do this first of all so uh i grew up in the woodworking industry so my my parents uh, they started something called razors custom woodworking so we've only been open for a month, like three to four orders. It is clear to me after a month that we don't do a very good job on the site of talking about our value proposition. And so our kaleidoscope pattern is actually unique. There's no two boards alike. So we only do end grain because end grain's the most forgiving to your knives. Send it back to us and we're gonna refinish it for free. This is $5.99. You give this board to your children and this, this board will have all of the memories that you've ever made. My greatest memories of my you know, Italian grandmother is cooking in the kitchen. And if there was something like this yeah. that she had been using, this would have been the thing that the entire family would have been fighting over. Oh, yeah. Self-finance, if you self finance, how much did that cost? Self-financing, uh, right now we're uh, just a little over 60,000. I'm sorry, I love this so much because it's one thing. You know, it's not like, it's a few different models of it, right? But it's one thing, it's a brand. It's, it, it's like, you could sell millions of these. But could you? Millions of these. The production on this is not mass produced. It is handcrafted. It is uh, a lifetime of oh. refinishing. Can you support yeah. this business so if you had a million about? orders? With the manpower at the shop, we're able to scale. That was the yeah. funnest meeting we've ever had. That really was. I just have one question for you as yeah. someone that's into kitchen stuff. Yeah. Could he sell a million of these? over the next 10 years. I think it's possible. I think it's 100% possible. Yeah. There's so much work to be done. Can we maybe uh, go to lunch? Yeah. It's 3.30 and all we've had is our morning beer. <laughs> we've done three meetings and uh, we have to go eat. So Jordan had to come home to cook barbecue. So we don't have time to eat barbecue out at a restaurant today. So we're ordering barbecue in to Jordan's house. Longest day ever. Jordan's never invited us out to his new house before. so. First time. So what what barbecue is this, dude? It's Hall's Barbecue. It's a gas station down the street from uh, from my house. Is it good? Oh, it's fantastic. You we came here because you're barbecuing. Yeah. What are you barbecuing for? I've got, uh, I've got friends coming over tonight, so we're making ribs. So we get gas station barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. I, we never we, we, we never we get invited over here. Our first time anything. over. He's he's out there actually making fresh barbecue, but. <laughs> We get the stuff from the gas station. This is the best $5 brisket sandwich I've ever had. Right? It's fantastic. Yeah, gonna... All right. Yeah. Starting our day and ending our day with Manhattan Project Beer Company. I think this is a sign. It is. Cheers, um, guys. Oh, cheers. Awesome. <laughs> cheers. If he has allocation available when he does this round, would you? Would we invest in a, in a brewery? It's, it's very non-traditional yeah. for us. I'm biased, he's my friend, and I love craft beer. I would invest just for those two things. I actually would consider investing. It'd be very unlikely for this not to produce returns for us based on the traction they have already before they even have a, their own brewery open. We're getting them at the point where they're ready to expand. Counterfine is a company I think that wants to be venture scalable. I'm not sure that they are yet. I think they need to find the right type of client. I'm totally open to investing as long as they can find the right market category that shows me more runway for growth than the one they're in right now. I say check back every quarter and see you know where they are with that. And then we went to probably what I would have guessed was the least venture scalable business, that cutting boards. Meeting. You were very negative going into I was that. very negative because I didn't, well, I didn't get it. They're only missing one thing, sales. I am worried about the price point because it's more expensive than any cutting board ever. that's on the market. If people are willing to buy it, I believe there's a brand here in high-end wood-crafted kitchen products. Yeah. Okay, I, listen, I think what yeah. today has proven for us, and we probably need to be more open-minded moving forward, is that a company doesn't always need to be venture scalable to be interesting for our style of investment. Absolutely. Right? And if you like this kind of thing, drop us a comment below. Let us know what you think about these companies.